let's talk about cavernous malformations. So these are cerebral vascular malformations consisting of dilated thin-walled capillaries. They are usually sporadic, however about 20% of them are autosomal dominant and can be associated with mutations in the CCM genes, CCM1, CCM2, and CCM3. The average age of presentation is around 20 to 30 years old. A lot of times, these cavernous malformations can be asymptomatic and they're detected on imaging uh, for brain MRI done for other reasons. However, they can also cause hemorrhage. These are abnormal capillaries, so sometimes they can break and cause hemorrhage. The highest risk of hemorrhage is in the brainstem lesions. These malformations can also cause seizures, as well as slowly progressive neurologic deficits. So for diagnosis, on CT scan, these are pretty hard to see and they may show a nonspecific mass. However, MRI brain is very characteristic and confirms the diagnosis. So you'll see a popcorn appearance on T1 and T2 weighted images, which you can see here. And these will also look dark on GRE or SWI sequences. So for genetic testing, there are three main indications for genetic testing. If you detect multiple cavernous malformations, or if there's a history of brain radiation therapy, or a positive family history then the CCM gene mutations are sent. So for treatment, for asymptomatic lesions, you can monitor clinically. Some people also will image at regular intervals. For a first time seizure, seizure medication is generally started due to uh, abnormal MRI, which confirms epilepsy. So, if you are having refractory epilepsy, if it's difficult to control with medical uh, therapy, then resection is considered. Also, if you have hemorrhage and especially recurrent hemorrhage, that's an indication for resection as well as progressive neurologic deficits. For prognosis, cavernous malformations that present with hemorrhage have a high risk of re-bleeding. Uh, however, antithrombotics and anticoagulation do not increase the risk of bleeding.